Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the order, or call, excuse me, call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors reorganizational meeting for 2021 to order. The time is now 7.03 p.m. Uh, we typically start out all of our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, but because of the telepresence nature of these items in light of COVID, uh, we are not doing that, uh, which brings us to the first item on the agenda, which is public comments. Uh, Sue, have we received any public comments by email or phone in advance of tonight's meeting? There were none. Okay, we have one member of the community on. Uh, Kelly, no comment? Okay, fantastic. At which point we will move into the items for the reorganizational meeting. First being the appointment of a temporary chairman for this night's, uh, tonight's meeting. I would uh, make a motion to have myself, Peter McCarthy, be the temporary chairman for the reorganizational meeting. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to appoint the temporary secretary for tonight's reorganizational meeting. I'll make a motion to have Susan Stabby be the uh, temporary secretary for tonight's reorganizational meeting. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, I declare all offices as vacant. The first office that we will be reappointing is the uh, position of chairman. Should I'd I like to make a motion that we uh, appoint Peter McCarthy as our chairman for 2021. Thank you. Second. Second. Oh, you second. Uh, give it to give it to Irene. Mix it up. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint the vice chairman. I'll make a motion to appoint Irene Selesky as the vice chairman for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Irene. Aye. You can't Jim. Yeah, uh, now aye. we can. Yeah. We, now we can. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item is to appoint the part-time secretary. I'll make a motion to appoint Sue Stabi. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to appoint the part-time treasurer. I'll make a motion to appoint Irene Selesky as the part-time treasurer for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the appointment of the assistant treasurer. I'll make a motion to appoint Dan Klein as the assistant treasurer for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next up is the appointment of Roadmaster. We'll make a motion. Make a motion. I'll go ahead, Irene. Make the motion to appoint Peter McCarthy as Roadmaster for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to appoint the township solicitor. This was Andy George from Kozlov Stout in 2020. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Andrew George from Kozlov Stout as the township solicitor for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to appoint the financial institution. We have previously banked with Fulton Bank. That was our bank last year for 2020. Oh, wait, you missed one. You missed oh, oh I, I apologize. Thank you, Sue. Right. Um, uh, actually, the next item on the agenda is to appoint the zoning hearing board solicitor. Uh, 2020 had attorney Keith Mooney from Barley Snyder. I motion that we once again appoint 
attorney Keith Mooney from Barley Snyder as the Township Zoning Hearing Board Solicitor for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, now the financial institution. We had uh, Fulton Bank appointed as the bank of our choice in 2020. I would suggest that we appoint them again in 2021. So my motion is to appoint Fulton Bank as the financial institution for Marion Township in 2021. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint Aikens Accounting as the financial audit firm for 2021. Uh, we actually made that uh, appointment through resolution 2021-1. No, you did or not. Or would we, would we? I'm sorry. No. I, I apologize, so apologize. The, got my, my tenses. At the, at the reorg meeting, you still have to appoint your auditor. Yeah, okay, I apologize. So we have, we did some, some shopping around an appointment last year, end of the year. Um, the, my notes, my, my tense was wrong on that. Yep. So uh, resolution 2021-1 would appoint Aikens Accounting as our financial audit firm. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2021-1. Second. Second. I right, gave it to Irene. Uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to appoint the engineering firm. Last year was McCarthy Engineering. I'll make a motion to once again appoint McCarthy Engineering for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. <clears throat> Next is to appoint the building code officials and code enforcement officer. 2020 was Craft Code Services. I'll make a motion to once again appoint Craft Code Services as the building code officials and code enforcement officers for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. <clears throat> Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to appoint the zoning officer, 2020 saw McCarthy Engineering. I'll make a motion to once again appoint McCarthy Engineering as the zoning officer for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint the Assistant Zoning Officer. 2020 had Craft Code Services. I'll make a motion to once again appoint Craft Code Services as the zo Assistant Zoning Officer. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to appoint the sewage enforcement officer. Uh, 2020 was Gary Erb. Uh, we have a, a number of other firms and individuals that have come into the mix as interested parties on this. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna have to pause from the, the quick flow of other appointments that we've had so far this meeting and do a little discussion therein as a board. Um, did you guys get a chance to look over the, uh, as much as I could consolidate the rate sheets? into that Excel sheet. Um, Gary uh, is indisposed presently at the moment due to health issues. However, there are a, another, actually at least one SEO who has offered to uh, provide alternative services at his rate sheet in the time being until he returns to work. Um, so we really have to not weigh that as a, a limiting factor for considering Gary simply because we would have the coverage uh, and he would return to work uh, relatively soon, hopefully, assuming uh, all that all the currently involved items go smoothly for him. Um, so do you guys have any thoughts? Or... 
Is that something that you would consider posting the rate sheet comparison or no? I, I have it up on the Google Drive. I can share it if we want to go that route. Um, do you want me to share it? I'd prefer that. If that's okay. Helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I don't think there's there's nothing sensitive on it. Mm -hmm. um, so give me just a second. I will. I will share wherever that is. Give me a second. Just as an aside, just for public knowledge, I did reach out to about six different people um, to see if they would offer uh, services. Some people declined. Some people were happy to respond. And even some of those who responded did not send us information, even though we requested it a few times. So, give me a second. My computer's fighting me on something. Give me just a second to get it shared. Trying to be. Technologically efficient. Nope. No, no, it's it's normally not not a big deal. I uh, I have the other monitor in play here for doing the recording on the the other computer, and it is of course opening up on the monitor that I don't have visibility on right this second. <laughs> um, that's usually how it goes. Okay, whatever. I'll open it here. Zoom in a little bit so everybody can see that. Too much. Let's do 150. Okay. Is that relatively easily readable for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the main interesting interested parties we had was Burks Envirotech, Gary, JB Environmental, Acela, and Chris Paff. Uh, Acela did not send over an itemized rate sheet. They only sent us hourly rates for their professional staff, project manager, engineer, etc. Uh, and Chris Paff has said that he would only be able to perform that role on, I believe it was Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, so the that would make scheduling things, especially with the, the upcoming online management stuff, basically impossible um, for him to, to be able to do that. So Sella and Chris are basically right out of the running, right out of the get-go in my mind. Um, JB Environmental, uh, they've actually said that they would do inspections, but they would not do any of the tracking they're in. That would be solely on us as a responsibility. Um, Berks and Virotech didn't comment one way or the other. Um, I do know from conversations with Gary last year that he would, once we give him a list of all the properties, he would, would track that. We'd obviously want to track it for our own edification too from an ordinance standpoint. But uh, we'd at least have the him, <clears throat> excuse me, him doing some of the heavy lifting of contacting people. Um, Potentially, Burks and Viretech might do the same thing as well, but they didn't have a comment. Otherwise, most of the stuff is fairly in line. The only difference is Gary is a little cheaper on like one or two things. He's a little more expensive than some of the other. Otherwise, it's it's pretty much a direct uh, comparison between a lot of them. Um, the the thing that I, I had and I didn't get any kind of clarity on the $45 for the, the probe from JB Environmental, that it's not specifically called out. That might be one probe. That might be two. So we could actually be looking at a cost of uh, $90 for that one instead of 45 but it, it was not clear on their rate sheet. So Jim, Irene, okay. from 
from this. Let's 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 discuss. Okay. Um, as far as the pump outs are concerned with the uh, Amat ordinance, usually your service that's coming to pump out will ask if there's an ordinance. Now we're sending out the letter um, to each of the residences. We've already contemplated the concept that we're going to have to create a database anyway mm -hmm. that of, of keeping track of which areas are getting pumped etc i know it would be i don't want to say a monumental task to kind of keep track of who, who's getting what it's up to each homeowner uh, responsibility to comply with that ordinance and it's one of those things that could be an annual review of who did and who didn't have a pump out at a certain month of the year and just say, hey, you know, by the way, just to let you know, this you need to be compliant and you're in this zone because I don't know about you, I receive a lot of things in the mail and I may or may not calendar it all that well. Mm -hmm. So as far as putting that back onto the responsibility of the SEO, whoever it is that we appoint, I would imagine we'd have that conversation saying, please, you know, this is the ordinance. We'd like you to help us out with this aspect of compliance. My part of our inquiry into other SEOs, other individuals who are, who may be interested in is because of some of the difficulty in tracking uh, services that we currently have and coordinating uh, payments and trying to identify where work has been done has been a very difficult task uh, over the past year. So trying to figure out who has gotten what done is not the most pleasant of experiences. Um, and so I'd be willing to give the opportunities to another agency to see if they could provide us a little bit more clarity um, as well as reliability for performing the services. So with that said, in terms of what we are looking at, what are your thoughts and opinions essentially between Berks Envirotech, Gary, and JB Environmental? I would, I'm leaning towards Berks Envirotech with having Gary as an alternate. Okay. Out of curiosity, is there something that sets Berks Envirotech above JB Environmental? Uh, only because of the, uh, the one uh, line that you highlighted, single family sewage management inspections or holding tank inspections they can't do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm assuming we have a lot of people in town that have holding tanks. And so that's part of our assessment over the Act 537 issue. We want to know if those tanks are viable, if they're being pumped out and properly maintained as well. Okay, so just also for the for the record, for clarity, they they would do the inspections, but they would not do any of the the tracking or or interfacing. They they flat out said that they don't have the the scheduling okay. availability to be able to to police that. Okay. Um, Peter, and, Peter, yes, I interpreted that letter as saying he doesn't have the staff or the time to do the inspections. Here, hold on. Did I interpret that wrong? Let me pull it up, and I'll. I'll read it out specifically. The, the, can... the inspections for the um, pump outs. Yep. I, I do not currently have the ability or staff to administer the inspection pumping notifications and record keeping portion. Okay. So it sounds like they would still do the inspections pump out things, but they don't have the, the bandwidth to actually do the notifications or the record keeping, the clerical work on it. So that means if we were to appoint JB, it would be 100% on us. To, to chase people and, and notifying police. Whereas if we to, were to go with Gary or Berks and Virotech, um, we could maintain essentially the golden source, the master database of uh, who, what, where, when, and, and how. And we could say these are the, the properties that based on the last time they pumped out are gonna come due for it. Make sure that obviously it's a homeowner's responsibility to stay compliant, but um, be sure to follow up with these folks because of the things that, that happen day-to-day -day life, this is probably going to be an easy one to slip people's minds. So, Jim, what are, what are your thoughts? 
I'm fine with Burks and Bio and Biotech and having Gary as an alternate. Okay. Okay, I will stop sharing my screen. Gary's going to be out for a while. The yeah. Procedure that he's having done. I've had that procedure and believe me, he's going to be gone for a while. Yeah. The only, the only thing, and like I said, don't let that be a, a mitigating concern there because it was um, Wayne Bowen offered right. to step in and perform Gary's duties at Gary's rate sheet. So if we were to appoint Gary as the primary, that other individual would, would do exactly the same thing as if Gary were physically there himself at the same rate card. Yeah, that's that's not even the issue that I have. Yeah, it's more okay. of a paperwork and a tracking issue that it almost seems like we're doing double the work, and and there should be clarity with location, service performed, and more ease of tracking what work has been done, rather than trying to second guess myself with every time I've paid a bill or reimbursed someone, etc. So. Oh no, I. Believe me, I, I, I know <laughs> all too well. Agreed. I just want to make sure that we're, we're making an, an unbiased decision here. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm okay with that as well. So Irene, if you'd, if you'd like to make the, the motion. I'd like to make the motion to appoint Burks and Virotech as the sewage enforcement officer. 2021, excuse me. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to appoint the alternate sewage enforcement officer. I'll make a motion to appoint Gary Erb as the alternate SEO for 2021. And we can actually, I want to do this just for the Clarity. So I want to do this in, in two two motions, one for each, because we can appoint two alternates. Okay. Actually, I think technically we can we can appoint a bunch of alternates, can't we? Because uh, we have three right now. No, or no we do we only have two? We only have two. Two alternates. Um, okay. When I first started, there was only one, and then um, Gary suggested we have two. Um, I mean, you can appoint. You can do it all in one motion. It doesn't. Matter. Yeah, just for the, the purposes of, I, I like to do them in separate ones. Um, I know that's probably a pain for you, Sue, but um, <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I, I like to be able to peel off individual motions. All right. But um, I'll make a motion to appoint Gary Herb as the alternate SEO. Second. Second. I'll give it to Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. I'll make a motion to appoint Chris Path as an alternate SEO. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, and the next question is, do we want to appoint a third SEO? Because we have previously in the past appointed Matthew Mack as an SEO. I'd like to do that as well. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Matthew Mack as an alternate SEO for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next up is to appoint road crew members. Uh, 2020, we had uh, Leon Brubaker, Tony Brubaker, Don Height, Kevin Sadison, David Stabby, John Selesky, Franklin Troutman, Richard Troutman, and uh, Peter Wallace was later added to ensure that we were able to make endorsements on the DGLVR and gravel low volume road grants. Um, I would make a motion to appoint uh, all of them again to the road crew for 2021. Including okay. Peter Wallace or not including Peter Wallace? Um, we don't have anybody else. That actually, mm, Table that for a second. Let's discuss. Um, we don't really at this present time have anybody else. Uh, Tulpa Hawken 
has stepped forward saying that they'd be temp willing to put somebody from their road crew who has the ability to endorse those temporarily onto our road crew, which would satisfy that. But present time, we don't have anybody else who can make that endorsement. Um, with COVID, uh, a number of the, the training courses uh, got canceled, for lack of a better term, and uh, none of us were able to get to the, the one virtual one that they did. So we... We wouldn't have anybody, and I'm actually I'm not even sure if Peter's, the other Peter's is still valid. It may have expired this no, year. No, it, it's still good. It's still good? Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure. It was, they're good for five years. Okay. Right? Okay. So this this might potentially be the last, depending on when he got it, it might be the last year or he might have two years left on it. But Well, I, he got, he, he attended that since I'm there. So mm -hmm. I'm there four years. So. Yeah. Either yeah, this year or next year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking we should just add him just in case he's, he's been cooperative in the sense that he said he'd be willing to do that so that we don't miss out on, on uh, free money in terms of grants. Um, Jim, Irene, what are your, your thoughts? No, sounds good to me. Yeah. Cause it, we're all waiting to have the opportunity to take that class. So, yeah. And the other thing is even if he's on the road crew, it doesn't mean that he's, he's going to get, paid anything if he never goes out on a truck which i'm pretty sure he does not want to do anymore um that just means he's he's on payroll and name only so mm -hmm. it's there's really no detriment to us it, it gives us a, an option in terms of signing grants that we wouldn't have otherwise and, and literally no downside um, so i'll return to my original motion um mm -hmm. to appoint the 2020 road crew for 2021 okay <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to appoint the two planning commission positions that are, are up for renewal. Uh, Ryan Allgaier and Franklin Troutman are... Uh, within terms that are expiring this year, both are willing to serve another term. Um, we have not received any other interested parties that have come forward about wanting to be on the planning commission. Uh, so I would make a motion to reappoint uh, Ryan Allgaier and Franklin Troutman. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the zoning hearing board. We actually have two positions that are, are going uh, for renewal this year. Uh, the first one is David Sadison, who is willing to serve another term. And the other is Charlie Zeckman, who is not willing to serve another term. Um, I know we had put some inquiries out there, but we have not received any interested uh, parties for that particular position. Um, so I'd, I'd make the motion to reappoint David Sadison to the zoning hearing board and to uh, temporarily leave open Charlie Zeckman's position until a suitable candidate can be appointed. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint the vacancy board chairman. This was Nancy Carrington in 2020. Nancy has expressed the willingness to continue to serve in that position. Uh, we have had no other interested parties, so I would make a motion to reappoint Nancy Carrington as the vacancy board chairman for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, next up is the historical board appointment. Uh, we have systematically been not reappointing positions to this particular board as they have become vacant. This year is the last position. It's Matt Barnhart. Uh, once we make no appointment for that, and that's actually going to be my motion, is to make no appointment to the historical board. Uh, we'll, we will have no members on that board, and we can actually at one of the future meetings table uh, dissolution of that particular board so that it's no longer 
an item for appointment. Was that your motion? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> if need, if, okay. So if need be, I can Think repeat again, it. Just to my, make it uh, <laughs> my, my motion is to make no appointment to the historical board. Okay. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. It's been a long day. I didn't even realize I rambled on that one. <laughs> okay. So okay. Was Matt. That was all. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt. Matt was the only one left. So now that we have not reappointed Matt's position, um, we can then fold that board down and we won't have to do that next year. There would be just wouldn't be an agenda item. Okay, next item on the agenda is to appoint the emergency management coordinator. Um, Irene, from a, a conflict of interest standpoint, I don't know if you need to abstain from this one. Uh, might not be a bad idea to regardless, uh, but I will make a motion to appoint John Seleski as the emergency management coordinator for 2021. Jim, I think it has oh, to be you. Oh, I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Dean. Jim. Hi. Okay, next up is the right to know records officer and alternate. Last year, uh, Irene was the right to know records officer, and I was appointed as the alternate. I'll make a motion to once again appoint Irene Seleski and Peter McCarthy as the right to know records officer and alternate respectively. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. You sure, you sure Jim, you didn't want that one? No, that's fine. <laughs> it's a... It's, I was gonna say it's it's a it's a wild good time. Um, <laughs> edge of your seat, thrill ride. Um, next up is to appoint the various liaison positions for the board of supervisors. The first one is the liaison to the planning commission, tw two thousand twenty. That was uh, me. Um, the next is the liaison to the zoning hearing board, which was me as well. Um, the liaison to the police department, which was me. <laughs> And uh, the liaison to the township building and playground, which was uh, switched to Jim when he joined the, the Board of Supervisors in 2020. Um, so what are, what are our thoughts behind uh, going in order, the liaison to the Planning Commission? Uh, I, I don't mind to continue to do that. I actually kind of enjoy zoning and planning. So uh, I'll make a motion to appoint Peter McCarthy as the liaison to the Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the liaison to the zoning hearing board. Um, Irene or Jim, would either of you have an interest in that? There's very few zoning hearings that come up, and even fewer of them require a liaison directly to the, the board of supervisors. But uh, if that's something that one of you would be interested in, I'd be happy to give it to you. I don't know what my availability is. I only get a schedule on the 20th of the month prior, so I don't think I would be a good fit for that. Okay. Jim, would you're, you have any? You're not required to attend the meet. The no, hearing. no. It's yeah. it's usually if there's something that they need to reach out to, they they have somebody to go to, go to directly. So like mm -hmm. rather than, for example, liaison to the police, rather than uh, the police calling Sue, they would call me. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I would be able to dedicate the time to that regardless. Okay. I'd be happy to do it if, if you don't if you don't care. Okay, yeah, I'd be delighted to, to more evenly divvy things up. So uh, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Jim as the liaison to the zoning hearing board. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Jim. Aye. Okay, next up is the liaison to the police department. I don't mind continuing to do that. If you'd like me to continue to do that as a group. I think that's appropriate. Okay. So I'll okay. make a motion to appoint Peter as the uh, liaison to the police department for 2021. 
Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the liaison to the township building and playground. Um, as mentioned before, that was assigned to Jim when he joined the, the team. Um, I would say based on COVID and everything else, there's probably not a, a whole lot going on presently, but I, I think that we should uh, still appoint Jim to that. And uh, obviously Irene and I will continue to be involved as we have a committed interest to making sure that they're successful in, in their endeavors, but uh, I'll make a motion to appoint Jim as the official liaison to the Township Building and Playground Association. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is to appoint the current per capita tax collection uh, individual. Uh, that was to Eileen Height in 2020. I'll make a motion to once again appoint Eileen Height for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint the current per capita tax collection uh, officer for delinquent, or excuse me, the current delinquent per capita collection, inverted a couple of words there. Uh, 2020, that was Element Statewide Tax Recovery, LLC. I'll make a, a motion to appoint uh, Element Statewide Tax Recovery, LLC, as the delinquent per capita tax collection group for 2021. May I ask a question? Certainly. Were there other options on that? Just mm -hmm. not, okay. not no. that we had received anything for. So no, it's it's pretty much that. It's a record keeping item. Okay, I'll second that motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to appoint the Chief Administrative Officer for Marion Township's Pension Plan, 2020. This was Irene. Uh, we would need to pass this by resolution 2021-2 uh, in order to reappoint Irene. So I would make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-2, reappointing Irene Seleski as the Chief Administrative Officer for Marion Township's Pension Plan. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to set the employee pay rates. In 2020, the secretary was paid an hourly rate of $18.50, treasurer $17.50 per hour, road crew $17.50 per hour. Uh, please note that the elected auditors would set the treasurer rate if the treasurer is a supervisor, which Irene is in this case. Mm -hmm. um, based on the budgeting that we did uh, Q3, uh, Q4 of last year, um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, set the secretary hourly pay rate at $20 per hour, the treasurer dollar amount at a suggested rate of $18 an hour, and the road crew rate at $18 per hour. I, I see Irene's lips moving, but I can't hear her. I think she's... Second that? There we go. We got it that time. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to set the snow emergency contractor pay rate. In 2020, we hired farmers for at $17.50 per hour on payroll and then rented their equipment for a total of $57.50, which came to a, a total rate of $75 an hour. Um, based on the increase to the road crew, I would like to make the, the motion that we increase the dollar amount to $18 per hour for them on payroll and set the uh, reimbursement rate for the rented equipment at fifty-seven dollars. I'll second that. Who wants it? <laughs> Any, meeny, miny, moe. Yeah. I'll give it to Jim. <laughs> I got to figure out a good rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Jim. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Next is to set the Board of Supervisors meeting pay rate and road work rates. Uh, this is a suggestion that we send over to the elected auditors who will be doing the reorganizational meeting tomorrow night and setting the meeting pay and road pay and any of the other pay rates associated with the Board of Supervisors. Um, 2020, we had the pay rate set as $60 per meeting uh, per member to be paid quarterly and $18.50 for road work. Um, I would like to keep those two rates the same. So I'll make a motion to set the uh, meeting pay rate for supervisors at $60 and the road work rate for supervisors for $18.50. Second. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Also, just uh, so if we can put a little asterisk on the end there, we, we acknowledge that we are not setting the rate ourselves. We're passing over a suggestion to the to the auditors. So what I do then is wait until the auditors do their meeting tomorrow night. And I come back and put in the minutes what they actually okay. uh, motion to do. Okay. I Fair give enough. them a letter saying this is what the supervisors recommend kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then they actually make the motion and let me know. Okay. What they set it as. Okay. Phenomenal. And then I put that in these minutes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to set the hourly rates for equipment rental. Um, this is not for renting out to, to private parties. This is for inter intermunicipality sort of affairs. Um, I don't have any problem with keeping the rates the exact same from 2020. We don't have a lot of uh, use of this particular item, and I don't really see a, a need necessarily to, to change it. Uh, Jim? Irene, what are your thoughts on maintaining the 2020 rates for the rented equipment? Agenda item number 33 we have for some power washers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, it would probably be the envy of other municipalities, but um, I don't think we have uh, or will have a lot of instances where where people would or other other governmental entities are going to be renting it from us. So, um, with that said, it actually isn't even one of the options on the list for rental. Um, we could add it if we certainly wanted to, but I don't see a, a real strong need to, speaking earnestly. Um, so I'll make a motion to set the same rates in 2021 as we had in 2020 for uh, hourly rental equipment. So would you mind listing them? I would be happy to. Uh, the greater is $50 per hour. The John Deere tractor and loader, the 301, uh, with or without attachments is $50 per hour. The John Deere tractor and loader, the 210C, is $50 per hour. International truck is $50 per hour. International truck and snowplow is $75 per hour. John Deere tractor, 6230, with or without attachments is $100 per hour. The greater and the V plow is $75 per hour. The Ford F550 dump truck, is $50 per hour. The Ford F550 truck and snowplow is $75 per hour. And the truck and spreader are $75 an hour. Stone is an extra charge. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to set the building and pavilion rental rates. Depending on what happens with COVID, this may be a non-issue with the building being closed and the park being closed, but um, the 2020 rates for AA group rental was $15 per day or $30 per week as they meet twice per week. The Grange was $15 per day as they meet once per month. Uh, the regular room rental was $40 per day and the pavilion was $25 per day. I don't see a reason to change that really one way or the other. I think it's it's fair for what we've been doing and has had uh, good success in the past. So I would make a motion to um, approve the 2020 rates as the 2021 rates. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. 
Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to set the mileage rate. 2021 IRS rate is 56 cents per mile. I so see no need to deviate from that. I'd make a motion to approve the mileage rate as 56 cents per mile for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the PSATS convention for 2021. Uh, this is the nominate the voting delegate for Marion Township. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was actually you, wasn't it, Sue? Yeah, it was, because I was the only one that went. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to, once again, uh, assign Sue as the voting delegate for Marion Township for the PSATS convention for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item is the Berks County Convention for 2021. Uh, in 2020, we had made a motion to authorize attendance, hourly compensation, and mileage of Board of Supervisors, Secretary, Treasurer, and to authorize the attendance and a $50 compensation and mileage of elected auditors and tax collector. Um, again, I don't see any, any issue with continuing to do that. I don't know how many of us are actually going to uh, be interested, willing, or able to attend the 2021 Berks County Convention, but uh, I'll make the, the motion to authorize uh, attendance, the hourly compensation and mileage of board supervisors, secretary and treasurer, and to authorize the attendance and a $50 compensation and mileage of the elected auditors and tax collector for the Berks County Convention 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to set the treasurer's and assistant treasurer's bond amount. In 2020, our bond amount was 900000 Per our insurance representative, each person handling money should be bonded, uh, which would mean Irene and Dan, we would need to renew the bonds for. I'll make a motion to once again carry a bond amount for each treasurer of 900000 Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to set the reorganization dates, or excuse me, the dates for all of our meetings at tonight's reorganizational meeting. Sue was kind enough to send out a, a very nicely highlighted calendar with all the holidays on it. Uh, there are a couple that fall specifically on days that we need to be aware of in terms of our schedule. Thanksgiving in 2021 is the uh, Thursday, the last Thursday of the month, which is 1125. Uh, so we would want to definitely relocate that meeting either to uh, potentially the day before Wednesday or the week before, which would be the 18th. Um, not that it makes a, a huge difference, but if we move it to the 18th, we would have really basically only two full weeks between the last Board of Supervisors meeting and the next Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, so there's probably not going to be a lot of difference between what we talk about what would be on the, the uh, 28th of October versus what we talk about on the 18th of November. Um, other than that, I truthfully don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. November, barring anything catastrophic, is usually one of the more quiet months in terms of activity. Um, Irene, Jim, what are your thoughts on placement for the November meeting specifically? Follow me either way, whether it's the 18th or the 24th. Okay. It's really whatever you guys, I'm someone who always works holidays and everything's always offered for me. So whatever your preference is. Okay. I'm personally so leaning we, towards. If we, if we do it this if we, if you make it the 13th and the 18th, that's exactly how we did it this year. Mm. So it was like two weeks yeah. after the October meeting. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal to move it like that, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm leaning towards too. I like the consistency of keeping it on on a Thursday, a day in time, even if we can't keep the same pattern of like last Thursday of the month in every single month. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think we have to move any of the other ones 
around. The only exception to that would be the December workshop meeting. Mm -hmm. right. um, because Christmas uh, falls on a Saturday, it happens to be the Saturday before the last Thursday of the month. Um, so we could move December up to would be the Board of Supervisors meeting on the 23rd and the workshop meeting on the 18th. Um, I think that's probably going to be our best fit. It's not on Christmas or Christmas Eve, and we don't have a situation where uh, any of the meetings are on a holiday. Um, or you could potentially just move the workshop meeting also. Keep the board meeting the last Thursday, but move the workshop meeting. That's oh. it, just a suggestion. Up to you. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> suggestion. Uh, Irene, Jim, what are your thoughts on doing the, the workshop um, essentially two weeks before the board meeting? Whatever you guys prefer. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, it doesn't me. I'm actually, I, I'm Jim, unless you disagree, I'm inclined to, to move the workshop meeting in December to the 18th and keep the board meeting on the, tw on the 30th. Fine. Okay. And the only other one that we had. And then. Let's say New Year's, New Year's is, um, New Year's is on, on a Saturday. New Year's Eve is on a Friday. I don't think that really that doesn't impact. Uh -uh. And say so that doesn't impact us at all. Uh -uh. Um, okay, so I'll make a motion to set the 2021 Board of Supervisors meetings to be every uh, each last Thursday of a month, held at 7 p.m. Uh, to be held in the municipal building or on Zoom telepresence based on COVID, uh, with the exception of November which will see the Board of Supervisors meeting be the 18th and the workshop meeting be the 13th. And December, which will have the Board of Supervisors meeting be the 30th and the workshop meeting be the 18th. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is to set the Planning Commission meeting dates. In 2020, we made a motion to set the Planning Commission meeting dates for the third Tuesday of every month at 7.30 p.m. as needed to be held in the, the municipal building. Um, I like consistency, so I'll make a motion to Set the Planning Commission meeting dates for 2021 as the third Tuesday of each month at 7.30 p.m. to be held in the Municipal Building. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to set the holiday schedule for the Township Office. 2020, we had made a motion to set the holiday schedule uh, for President's Day, Primary Election Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Election Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. I think that's a, a pretty good list for uh, observed holidays for us. I don't see really any other day that jumps out at me is a, a good good addition to that and I don't necessarily want to take any of them away. Um, Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts on retaining the 2020 uh, holiday schedule into 2021? I have no issues with that. Sue, do you have any other requests? Well, if you want to give me all the holidays, that would be wonderful. Yeah, there's there's a I'm long, kidding. long, long list of yeah, holidays on the side really, of that calendar you sent us. Really. We can close for uh, the vernal equinox, April Fool's yeah. Day. <laughs> um, I mean, the only thing is on the calendar, July Fourth is a Sunday, so that you know, so um, I think before you gave me just an extra day. Yeah, we in, in previous times, and I can't remember if there was a separate motion for that, but we gave you an observed holiday. Well, I think that was actually caught like after the reorg meeting. Okay. So you did it at another meeting. So it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. So I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll take care of that all in one fell swoop. Um, I'll make a motion to set the holiday schedule for 2021 to include President's Day, Primary Election Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day as a flo floating holiday for the Secretary, 
Labor Day, Election Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. I saw Irene's lips moving, but I didn't, oh. didn't hear anything. There we go. Got it okay. that time. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. That is the final item on the agenda. Um, unless uh, Jim, Irene, or Sue, you have anything that you'd like to add? Nothing. Just thank okay. you for the raise. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all your hard work. Yes, I your, try. Your, right. your, your commitment and dedication is a, a huge help to us as we try to, to sort through all the things that we have on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, with that said, Happy New Year, everyone. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 7.58 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care, and uh, I'm sure we'll... <laughs> we'll we'll be in touch via email about various things, but uh, I'll talk to everybody at the uh, January workshop meeting. Okay. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye.